Hello, my name is Fabio Duarte. I'm a principal research scientist at MIT, and I work at the Sensible City Lab. I will share my screen with you so we can go over a few projects that we do at Sensible City Lab, where we try to use data to better understand our cities. Here at MIT, our mission is to do research, but also bring this research to practice so that we can improve the way we think, but also design our cities, in our case, at Sensible City Lab. And why this is important for us? Because cities occupy only 3% of the Earth crust. However, more than half of the world population lives in cities, and we are responsible for more than 70% of energy consumption and 75% of CO2-related emissions. Our responsibility is huge. At the lab, what we try to do is to understand and bridge the gap that still exists between the physical layer of cities and the digital layer. And we humans, we live between these two layers. So if we want to understand urban phenomena in novel ways, we need to combine both layers. And this is what we try to do here at the Sensible City Lab. And I will show you three projects. And these three projects, they share two main concepts that we have here at the lab. One of them is what we call opportunistic data. Every time that we log on the internet or use a cell phone, we leave behind digital traces. Sometimes these digital traces, they are combined in huge repositories. What we can do as researchers is to find new questions and new methodologies to answer these questions. On the other hand, sometimes we have a specific urban phenomenon to understand and we don't have available data. So we need to build sensors and to deploy sensors to gather this data and make sense of them. Let me show you these three projects. The first one, Freepedia, is based on opportunistic data. At the time, we were interested in quantifying green canopy in cities. When you see this image, you see, okay, probably trees are helping purifying the air, but also trees, trees give us a psychological comfort. But how we can quantify all this green canopy in cities? One method is simply to count trees. The problem is that this is very labor intensive, very slow, therefore very expensive. But also there is another problem. What this person is doing is counting trees. But if you look carefully, carefully at this image, most of the greenery actually is on the green walls and the grass and also in trees in private land. How can we quantify this when we walk along the streets? Another method is to use satellite imagery. Here we have another problem. It's very precise. We can quantify all greenery in the city. Still, we cannot quantify green walls, but most important in our case is that if we think in the whole world, there are not many cities with technical capability to quantify its own urban greenery. So we try to devise a method with data that are available to anyone, or at least to hundreds of cities. And we thought, well, actually in the Western world, almost 500 cities are already covered with Google Street View. And you know that China, for instance, they have a similar service. So how could we use all this available visual data and turn this visual data into information? Information that cities can use to better design and improve their greenery. So this is an example how Tripedia works. Here you see a car going from Boston to Cambridge. And when the car is driving, 
what we're doing is actually collecting all these images and we can quantify the amount of green along streets. In this case, our computer vision model is very simple. As you can see here, it simply quantifies the green pixels in each frame and subtract from the overall as a ratio. Therefore, we know the green view index. It's not precise in the sense that I'm not counting the number of trees, but I'm quantifying the amount of urban greenery in cities. And by doing that, I can have a comparative measurement between cities. Also equally important is that by doing that, we decide to develop a open source Python library. We at the lab launched about 10 cities and all the other cities, they were done by citizens, by residents of these other 15 cities, simply by running this Python code. This is a way that we can somehow democratize access to data and to methodologies that otherwise will be restricted to only a few researchers. Sometimes, on the other hand, we know that there is a rich information around, but they are not readily available. So what we do in this case, in other words, we develop our own sensors. And what we did here, we decide to go into the sewage system because we know that there is a rich amount of public health information in wastewater. However, cities, when they monitor wastewater, they go to treatment plant. By then, we cannot know when this wastewater, the sewage was generated and where. What we decide to do is to develop small robots and deploy them in each manhole, or actually in manhole that were nodes in larger areas, but covering mainly neighborhood level area, not citywide area. And this is what we did uh, in, 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 in a few cities. We went there first with a group of uh, colleagues and we started sampling wastewater and bringing this wastewater to the laboratory. But after some time, we decided to develop these small automatic samplers, robots. robots. The first one was Mario and Mario, uh, it could go into the, the, the manhole and collect different samples in six chambers. However, Mario was a little bit chubby and then we went to a second generation, which is Luigi. Luigi is much slimmer and it filters wastewater. So we can bring to the lab only an extract of sewage, which helps us to identify bacteria, virus, and other pathogens. And finally, we have Yoshi. Yoshi has dry eyes inside, and we can leave it there for 24 hours, sampling every half an hour, for instance, and we bring the samples with a timestamp and do all the analysis that we need. And here, what you see is actual data. And the idea is that if we bring this data in a, an appealing way to city officials, but also to residents, they would be engaged in research. Therefore, understand the richness of what we do and contribute in improving the city. We've been running underwords in several cities, in Seoul, in Kuwait, in Boston, and now in Spain. And a company that is paying out of rowboat is uh, monitoring COVID in more than 200 cities in the United States. This example, different from Tripedia, which was an opportunistic data, is an active data collection. If in this case, we decide to monitor a specific infrastructure, what happens when we need to go to a larger areas in city? Here, the final project called Favelas 4D, we decide to study informal settlements. In some countries, they cover 
large portions of main cities, and they are very difficult to map because first they grow very quickly. And secondly, sometimes they don't grow only horizontally, but also vertically in very complex ways. So satellite imagery would help us a lot, but will not be sufficient to understand all the spatial complexity of these spaces. For instance, this is an example in Brazil, in Rocinha. And what we did there is to try to use laser scanning to analyze all this spatial complexity. And by doing this laser scanning, we could measure the distance between the source, so the scanner itself, and each obstacle that this laser beam touched. It's a very rich, but very difficult uh, data to work with. But let's see what we decide to do in Brazil. Even though Rocinha is the largest favela, we have dozens of favelas only in Rio. And all of them, they are this complex environment. And Rocinha, to be honest, is one of the most well-established. And still, overall, only 20% of these streets are covered by Google Street View. So how can we use LiDAR, this laser scanning, to understand uh, this complex environment? We went there with some employees from the city that were providing new services to this community. And by doing all these analysis, we can immediately and very quickly understand spatial complexity that otherwise would take months, even years to quantify. Imagine informal settlement with more than 100,000 inhabitants if we have to have all these measurements. And these measurements are important if I want to provide electricity or sewage or water supply, I need to understand this urban phenomenon. And we need to know that in the future, our cities in the world, unfortunately, will probably look like Rocinha and not Dubai. And this is why by turning these technologies in useful tools to understand contemporary and complex urban phenomena, we can probably and hopefully make our cities better. So it was a short talk. I couldn't be present with you, but I hope that you have enjoyed. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.